Hi and welcome to Kaylin Dash Tech Lesson 29. In this lesson, we're going to show you how to configure QNQ tunneling and when and why we might require this beneficial protocol. QNQ tunneling. Okay, so what is QNQ tunneling? As stated here, it allows multiple VLANs to traverse downstream, upstream ISPs utilizing the ISP specified tag with the following protocol reference points. A C tag, which is a customer tag, and all that is is the VLANs that you require for the customer's, uh, the customer's CPE device. Uh, the S tag, which is the service provider tag. Um, why would we need to use QNQ tunneling? Okay, well, as we've stated here, you can imagine a scenario where the end customer has purchased an Ethernet circuit and you, as the service provider, for that particular customer, are required to manage the supplied CPE device. This is a device that your supply it might be. It's more than likely going to be a little uh, office firewall of some sort. Um, so from a Juniper perspective, maybe a 300 or a 340. Um, a 340 is more beneficial because you can actually slot a, a DSL circuit um, board into that um, for backup routing. Um, and we have the following VLANs across a physical link, okay? So imagine you've got these two VLANs. You've got a customer VLAN, and that's the VLAN that supplies the customer with their data flow. And you've got a management VLAN because you, as the service provider, who have supplied the CPE, uh, in reality, we'll probably have the management responsibilities to that CPE device. And as such, you don't want the customer to have admin access to the CPE. In fact, you don't want the customer to have access to it at all from that perspective. Okay, and so the reality is that what happens is your downstream upstream ISP will more than likely charge you per VLAN utilized. Okay, so that brings a couple of issues. Uh, for every customer's CPE, um, that will require the management VLAN, you're going to be paying for that for every single customer, even though you're sending out to the ISP the same VLAN. Uh, that could become quite expensive once you start getting into maybe the thousands of um, Ethernet subscribers that you may well have. Um, it also means that eventually, um, given that you... Um, uh, utilizing the same VLAN you're gonna run out of uh, 4 slash 30 addresses dependent on what IP format you're utilizing and what I mean by that is it depends if overall your you've put aside a 4 slash 24 if you've put for uh, a 4 slash 16 that's gonna be very beneficial or 4 slash 8 um, as long as it's private address ranges you'll you'll be okay anyway um, it's this is mainly that you'll have an issue if you're utilizing a 4 slash 24. So how does it all actually work? Okay, well, to start with on our router, um, we need to configure an outgoing interface for flexible VLAN tagging uh, in Juniper. Um, we'll need to configure the sub interfaces with the management VLAN, the customer VLAN, the 4 slash 30 customer management IPv4 addressing and the provider's S tag. And the reason we need to configure it for the provider's S tag is not for outgoing packets, it's for the return data. Because the S tag will still be encapsulated, um, uh, uh, sorry, our VLANs will still be encapsulated by the S tag when it comes back in. And we need to strip that S tag off. Okay, um, when the packets leave our network, they're tagged as a normal VLAN. In this case, we're utilizing um, uh, VLAN 10 as the customer in this example and VLAN 99 as the management VLAN. Okay, when the packets enter the ISP network, the ISP encapsulates them with their S tag of 500 as it traverses their network. Therefore, they do not really care what VLANs we supply to their network. And this is where it becomes beneficial to use Q and Q. They really don't care. Um, so uh, we can use whatever tags we want. The important thing to note within our documentation to a particular customer is the S 
tag number that the ISP, the downstream workstream ISP will supply us because that is the information that will allow us to see our end customer. So it's important to keep documentation up to date when utilizing this. Okay, when the packet leaves the ISP network in the outgoing direction, the um, ISP network strips the S tag automatically as it leaves in that direction, um, outgoing, okay? Um, so it, it, it basically leaves the original C tags in place of 10 and 99 in this case. Remember the C tags are just the VLANs that we're utilizing. Okay, when the packets reach the CPE, we can utilize uh, an integrated routed and bridging, so an IRB interface for the management. But what we need to do, because we don't want the customer to have access to that CPE, we keep them at layer two until it reaches their network at the far end, okay? So um, the outgoing interface uh, from the customer CPE facing the customer network will also be at layer two. So actually the customer's gateway address will actually be the network address that we will put on the sub interface on our router in our network. Okay, so they will never see the CPE. And that's why we really need Q and Q tunneling at this point. We don't have to utilize that, of course, you can utilize it in a normal manner. But it's going to, it's, Q and Q tunneling is a very cost effective way of, uh, uh, of achieving an end result to a customer CPE piece of equipment when two VLANs are required to go there. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at how we configure this. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to configure up our network, so our MX, um, which would be our core router um, which would be our PE basically to an upstream um, ISP but from an Ethernet circuit perspective that could be upstream or downstream um, so let's go ahead and do that um, so the first thing we have to do is we have to set our interfaces which in this case is GE001 and we have to put in um, our hierarchical scheduler okay and we have to put an implicit hierarchy and we have to do this because of the outer and inner um, VLAN tags okay we also need to set because of this um, rather than just VLAN tagging it has to be flexible VLAN tagging so we pop in here flexible VLAN tagging okay and we have to put an encapsulation of the flexible Ethernet services so we're going to encapsulate and we're going to put in there flexible Ethernet services so that sets up the actual interface itself now what we're going to do is we're going to put in our two sub interface requirements okay so again we're setting GE001 and what we'll do is we'll use the uh, normal format where we tend to use a sub interface that's named um, following the uh, VLANs that are going to be utilized so in this case we're going to use unit 10 for VLAN 10 and unit 99 for VLAN 99 so let's go ahead and do that, unit 10. Now, um, it's best to give it a description here because, as I've said, uh, it's the S tag that's really, really important. Um, but from our perspective, the, um, the VLAN tags are also important. But from information coming back, from the packets coming back, the S tag is what is really important. So it, it's, it's, it's best to give a description that tells you which customer this is going to. In this case, we're just going to put customer VLAN to show you. Okay, um, so let's pop in there customer dash VLAN, but it might be whatever the name of your customer is. Um, that's the best way to do that from a description perspective. Okay, um, and then what we've got to do is we've got to tell it 
what tags we're expecting. So we're going to say VLAN tags and we're going to put outer and we know that the outer encapsulation is going to be 500 because that is what the downstream upstream ISP is going to encapsulate our VLANs with. Okay, and we then have to tell it the inner and the inner tag is 10. Okay, um, and also we are now going to give it the IP address. Okay, uh, we're going to utilize this from an IP address perspective and not a bridged perspective because of the outer inner tags required. Okay, so we'll just give it the forward slash 30 that we'd use. Um, and what will happen is the opposing forward slash 30 address will not be on the customer CPE because from a customer perspective, the CPE will act like a transparent bridge. It will just forward the information across, okay, via the VLAN. Okay, so uh, the actual other end will be at the customer site itself, okay. So let's just utilize uh, 10. We'll, f uh, we'll follow the format again of the VLAN. So 10, VLAN 10, 192.168.10. Okay. And that is the basic configuration for VLAN 10. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to do exactly the same now for uh, VLAN 99. So this time we're going to use unit 99. And we'll give it a description. And we'll call this management VLAN. And you'll know it belongs to this particular customer because of the interface is utilized, okay? Um, and again, we've got to say the VLAN tags. So the VLAN tags outer is... 500 and the inner in this case is 99 okay and again we're going to put the address on um, the opposing address for this one will be an IRB interface on the CPE this allows us our management to the CPE whilst not allowing because of the pass through of the layer 2 um, for the customer okay so again we'll just follow the VLAN numbering so 192.168.99.1 forward slash 30 okay um, and we can commit that okay now if we do a run show configuration and a display set okay that is your configuration for one customer completed okay with regards to how the Q and Q is dealt with from an outer and inner tag perspective at our core P system now, obviously, with regards to this, you are going to have to put your routing in place, okay, so that you can stipulate how you reach the other networks, all right? Okay, so those will have to go in place as well. Okay, so let's also have a look at, uh, at the CPE side of things, which will be the SRX, okay? Um, let me just change the font size on this for you so that you can see what I'm typing in here. Um, and the configuration should already be here. Um, I've already configured it for you. So, uh, oh. spelling a little bit out there. This is just the basic configuration, but it also shows you how to set up an IRB on here as well. Um, okay, so so what we've got on here is we have configured 
the interface that faces the customer. It's Ethernet switching interface mode trunk. I know there's only one VLAN going across it. We've set up our VLANs. So we've set up our customer VLAN. Okay, we've named it as customer. So we can actually either here as a members, we can either put the the VLAN number. So in this where it would say customer, we could put 10 uh, as per down here, the VLAN ID. Or we can just put the name and it will associate automatically this VLAN ID number. So we've utilized the name here. So this goes across to the customer. Okay. Um, I haven't configured GE001 uh, just at the moment um, because I'd like you to be able to see that being configured. Uh, so we've configured the IRB interface, which is our address look, our opposing address for management. Um, that is included here where we put the layer 3 interface IRB.0. Um, it, it could be IRB, uh, normally you would use IRB.99, but in this case, because I'm using um, EVENG software, um, the, I, the only IRB interface available to me is uh, zero, so hence the point of putting zero on here. This IRB interface has to be included in the zone, okay, uh, whatever zone you're going to put it in. Okay, and naturally, because we've put it in trust, the default on this comes without these two lines here. So we need to add these two lines in as well. Okay, but again, from a security perspective, you wouldn't allow all. You'd only allow the services and the protocols that you actually want. Okay, the actual um, policy is there for the uh, trust to trust zone. Okay. Um, but because the two interfaces, G000 and 001, um, are going to be in uh, interfa uh, Ethernet switching, um, interface mode trunk, uh, they don't need to be assigned into the zone itself. Only the IRB interface does. Okay? And that is the configuration, really. Um, Sorry, the only difference between, let me just do a show, compare. So the only difference between 001 and 000 is that we are allowing customer and management. Okay, so the VLAN members for GE001 would read unit zero, family ethernet switching, VLAN members, customer, VLAN members management okay and that's how that side of it would work okay um, from the perspective of the customer the customer ends configuration will be down to them entirely uh, if you have any questions regarding this I can't actually ping the other end because we don't have the uh, the middle ISP uh, configuration which would set the S tag for us okay however this configuration is a working configuration okay so that's how we would configure our end to accept the outer and inner tags of a Q in Q configuration okay thank you bye bye